folks, I'm Dave, and welcome to the start of my playthrough of Fate's Grand Order's Camelot Singularity. A singularity that I've been looking quite forward to, and while I haven't brushed up on it quite recently, I have been fond of the various takes on the Arthurian legend that I've read in the past. So, with that tweet, it bit in man, so let us continue henceforth to my room just to view the prelude, because I did skip it initially, although I have yet to actually see what entails there. So it's going to be all new to me. I believe it's in the Singularity Log as well. Yep, here it is. Preludes! So that's why I've awakened you. You understand the situation, don't you? Of course, I understand. We have no ways of knowing what has become of the world. However, that which I must accomplish is still here in my hands. Mind, body, and soul. The Holy Trinity, all of which have worn out during your long exile. Very well, I shall grant a sinner's promise. Know that this is your one last chance. Is this a male or a female, actually, that's speaking to Lucius, I wonder? But let's be perfectly clear, okay? Regardless of the result of this upcoming battle, you will die. Your soul exhausted, ousted from the cycle of reincarnation. Your existence will fall into the void. Even then, do you still strive for the end of your journey? I push strength in my broken knees. I move my left arm, now as thin as a twig. He is right. I am nothing but ash. I could barely lift a finger with this exhausted body. I hardly have any soul left either. I've burned it all as fuel to move my broken body. And my mind. It's worn out just like my body and soul. I no longer have any of it left. Nay, that alone shall not be the case. My mind. My will. They remain loyal to my king and his glory. I see. So you've decided to take a stand. Then take this. It's my parting gift to you. The place you will travel to is a hypothetical, a place standing at the edge of the world where chivalry is striving to be perfected. You shall face your former allies. You shall face the sin you have committed. Even so, the light in that hand shall never dwindle. Why, you ask? Because... Because? Well... Oh gosh! This ain't a lovely looking place now, is it? It's awfully be sandy and wastelandy. Ugh. When I came to my senses, I was already in this foreign land. The arid earth, the raging winds, the scorching atmosphere, all without signs of life. So long, so long have I, have I journeyed. No, it would be arrogant to call this a journey. It's like I've been wandering around all this time. As I wandered, I saw numerous worlds. Some worlds were beautiful, others ugly. Yet, I've never known a hell like this. It brings to mind my own impoverished homeland. But isn't that a better thought compared to what I am witnessing? My homeland could be considered quite prosperous. I see, so this is the end of the journey that I was granted. I take a step onto the sandy earth. No matter what I must sacrifice, this time I will. This time for sure. I will kill my king with my own hands. Oh, so I better set up here. We've got going. And this seems to be a flashback of sorts. Given the fact that it looks like we seem to be in Chaldea, I'm going to assume that this is from Mashi's point of view. Let's hope I'm right. I woke up at the same time again today. I checked my temperature, I checked my five senses, I said my name out loud so I could understand it objectively. Mash Kirilite, that was the name they gave me, a human being. So it's Mash's point of view. <gasps> and there's Roman! Hello buddy, how are you doing uh, in this past flashbacky thingamabobbit? Hello, nice to meet you, summon experiment number two. Oh, no, that won't do. Wait, MASH was an experiment? Starting today, I should call you by your proper name. Don't worry, I've stopped the recorders. 
Hello, Mash Curie Lights. I'm Romani Archiman. From now on, I'll be your primary physician. Oh, is it alright if I take a seat here? Since that was unprecedented, my words and actions were delayed. No doctor has ever entered this room before. The reasoning was that it was sufficient to speak through the glass. Oh, is that right? To be able to convey your feelings even through glass. Chaldea is very advanced in deeds. Eh, but it's not the same as speaking face to face, though. Like when you can actually see the person and their mannerisms and whatnot. That's not to undermine things like voice chats for phone calls and whatnot. Those are quite fun too. But I digress. But I'm still quite an amateur. I can't have a proper conversation unless I talk to people directly like this. So please don't hesitate to tell me what you think or feel. I want you to tell me all kinds of things. Communication is the best way to achieve mutual understanding. You can achieve I mean, not even achieve, acquire. That, that, that's one heck of a misread. Far more information and feel someone else's warmth, right? I see. I nodded. Indeed, more information can be acquired this way than through glass. The manner in which someone speaks, their gaze, temperature, scent, mannerisms, all things I have never experienced before. As such interactions are deemed human-like, for the first time, I responded in a human-like fashion by agreeing to his proposal. Hello, and nice to meet you, Dr. Romani. Oh, about that. I don't like the name Romani, see? And the name Archiman is a bit pretentious. I'd like you to call me Roman. Dr. Roman. Sounds good, huh? I know the words in Roman may stem from romanticism. It means to observe the world not by reason or logic, but to observe it spiritually, subjectively. The definition of the word changes from person to person. Even so, if I had to explain it, it is the philosophy of imagining a good future, the sense of fulfillment when living one's own life. Man, you have one heck of an opinion on this name. Unlike my allotted period of activation, which is a detailed and efficient schedule. Perhaps the hopeful observation that tomorrow holds many possibilities is what the word is trying to express. Yeah, we got it deep! Oh my, that's quite a serious opinion you've got there. You sound like a senpai character from a Japanese comic. But she's my Kohai! In the future. Oh, but that should be okay. You've been in Chaldea a lot longer than I have, so that would make you the senpai. <sighs> it's rather pathetic, actually. Although I am the head of the medical department. For the longest time, I didn't even know this section existed. I am truly sorry. Dr. Roman apologized to me for no reason. What mysterious person. Also, he was wrong. The Japanese terms senpai and kohai are similar to that of a teacher and a student. However, I have yet to learn a single thing from the doctor. Since my knowledge was input from Shiba, that would make Shiba my senpai in terms of knowledge. Wait, Shiba? Like, the queen. Huh. And so, when it comes to knowledge and information within Chaldea, I am the Kohai. Aside from that, though, it may be impossible if I had a senpai life. It would be someone inherently human and of average status. Not the best, but a normal person who strives to do their best. I think it would be someone who doesn't hurt others and never gives up. An upright human being. After all, that's the kind of person I was modeled after when given life. I see, you're right. Not many people like that exist here in Chaldea. The staff here is made up of freaky geniuses. There isn't anything normal or average about them. Well, good and bad, normal or not, I guess all that makes up what it means to be a human. I'm sure one day you'll find a senpai that you can truly rely on. Aww. The doctor's words left a really strong impression on me. A senpai that I could truly rely on. To imagine such a future sure made my eyes flicker with hope. A future filled with romance. Alright, then once again, nice to meet you, Mash. Let's try to make this a lasting relationship. Sure, I answered. I'm a designer baby crate for experimental purposes. Therefore, my lifespan is predetermined. So you're like a homunculus? I have been in operation for more than 10 years. 
If my surgery succeeds, I can live for a few more years. Oh, I am very happy. After all, I get to have self-awareness for that much longer. Senpai? Huh. There you have it. That's as much as I can disclose about MASH. Chaldea is an organization listed under the United Nations, yes. But it's actually also a research facility for the Meiji's Association, for the Animusphere family. In the name of safeguarding humanity's future, they carried out numerous unethical experiments. Namely, fusing a heroic spirit and a human, the demi-servant experiments. As you must know yourself, despite being used as familiars, heroic spirits are superhuman entities. They could even kill their masters and return to the throne of heroes if they so desired. You could hardly call them safe weapons. As such, the previous director looked for a more reliable way to harness their power. Normally, you would use relics related to them as callists for the summoning, but Chaldea used human CHILDREN INSTEAD! WHAT THE HECK?! Children possessing not only magical circuits fit to summon heroic spirits, but also innocent souls. Using this method, Chaldea wanted to fuse heroic spirits with children and turn them into humans. Owing to this concept, the previous director secretly created children by artificial insemination in Chaldea. That was over 10 years ago, at the turn of the 21st century. That was also how Mash was born. She's a human created through artificial insemination, through DNA manipulation. In terms of being created, you could say she is similar to a homunculus. Hmm, fair dose. However, fundamentally, she's just a human. A human with excellent magical circuits. Please make no mistake about that. I'm also sure Mash doesn't want Dave to have the wrong idea about her. Of course I wouldn't do that. You're right. It was stupid of me to assume that. Anyway, several years after Mashi's birth, they conducted the fusion experiment. Dr. Okamari said the experiment failed. No, the summoning itself was successful. A heroic spirit was summoned within Mash. That was the second heroic spirit summoned by Chaldea. However, the heroic spirit did not awaken. It must have been a noble heroic spirit. They didn't want to acknowledge Chaldea's, the previous director's actions. Should I depart? The girl will die. Therefore, I will not leave, nor will I awaken. MASH proved that humans can fuse with heroic spirits. But at the same time, proved how unethical those fusions can be. Even when they're anti-heroes, Hero experts reject being fused with humans, for some reason. And so the fusion experiments were aborted, and a year later, the previous director was found dead in his office? Huh. It was ruled a suicide based on the circumstances. Marie came here after that. The rest is exactly as you imagine. I somehow got Marie's permission to add MASH to the staff. Even if her heroic spirit never awakened, her capacity as a master is first class. I thought to myself, I won't let this precious resource go to waste. Initially, Marie was scared. Of course, who can blame her? First, the father she idolized passed away. Then she found out about his cruel experiment. Yeah, it was rather inhumane. She was so shocked, she... Ooh. Blah, 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 come to me. She refused to eat for an entire month. She was like 30% more hysterical about everything. She was close to a mental breakdown when she took over as director. But then one thing that scared her more than anything. And that was giving freedom to the one successful case of heroic spirit fusion. Since she was already so worried, it was only natural that she was scared of MASH. Mash is going to take revenge on me. She will viciously kill me in the restroom. Why wouldn't she? Marie would scream about that endlessly. So was she just putting up a strong front when we first met her then? However, 
Even as she was consumed by fear, she never once turned her back on MASH. That was her charm. She was so serious about everything. She would never do anything immoral, no matter how much she hated it. Thanks to that, MASH was acknowledged as a human and given freedom within Chaldea. Of course, her freedom was only allowed within Chaldea. Even though she possessed magical circuits any mage would dream of, her body was too pure. Having been raised in a sterilized room, her body couldn't adapt to the outside world. Oh, so she was forced to live a sheltered life, well, all her life, for the most part. For as long as she remained operational, she'd only been able to live in Chaldea. As long as she remained operational? What makes Smash different from other human beings is that her lifespan has been predetermined. The designer babies created by Chaldea mostly ended in failure. Mash was one of the rare survivors. Even so, her cells started to degenerate at a rapid rate. Her physical body won't age any more than it already has, so she won't die of old age. But she'll expire when her life force dries up. One day, suddenly, like a robot running out of batteries. What? You knew all that? And you're fighting with that doctor? Uh, he's probably not fighting with her. Of course I worry about her and want to help her. I'm not heartless. But when it comes to her lifespan, I don't pity her. That would be an insult to her. Sure, her life has a definite end, but the same can be said for all life forms. Life is full of suffering and sorrow. In that regard, we are not so different from MASH. Humans cannot escape from the fear of death. Sorry, I'll get back on topic. MASH was then selected as a master candidate, and in a short time, the top candidate of the A-Team. Shortly after that, the light on Chaldeus disappeared. Olga Mari negotiated with the United Nations and got approval to investigate singularities with the Masters. That's when candidates like you were assembled, followed by that incident. Right before we delved into Fuyuki. Where the command room was damaged and you were ray shifted, it was then that MASH became a demi servant. That must be reason she can function in the outside world, albeit only in her ray shift destination. However, the fundamental problem remains unsolved. By becoming a demi-servant, Mash acquired a more durable body. Even so, her cells have a lifespan. She can remain operational for at most one more year. That's why I wanted to tell you. Does Mash know about that? I don't think so. At least, no one has spoken to her about it. Doctor. Mash Kiralite's physical adjustment's over. Brainwaves, vitals, everything's normal. She should wake up any time now. What are your instructions? There's no need to put her to sleep again. Once she wakes up, make sure to respect her free will. Understood. We will make preparations accordingly. Now then, Dave. I'm sure Mash will come straight here after she wakes up. Before she arrives, I have a favor to ask of you. Please interact with her in the same way you always do. In Mashi's eyes, the time you spend as friends has become something irreplaceable. That much is clear, just by looking at her brainwave graph since the start of the Grand Order. So I'd like you to not be overly considerate, or worry too much about her. Of course, I'm not going to tell her that I've spoken to you. What do you say, Dave? Are you any good at acting? Like pretending you're seeing a movie for the first time even though you saw it already? Oh, don't worry, I've had to do that before. It wasn't the best feeling. Because when you're watching a movie for the second time with people that have already seen it, right? It's so tempting to just be like, oh, this is when this happens. But like, no, don't spoil it. Just let the people enjoy it and relish in their reactions. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yes, please do that. 
Mash is a perceptive kid, so I'm sure she'll catch on eventually. But at least till then, I'd like her to enjoy herself whenever she's not in battle. Yes, that would be the best way to approach this. This is quite a compromise coming from Roman. Da Vinci? Have you been listening the whole time? Of course I have! It's you we're talking about! Who knows when you will chicken out when talking about MASH? If that were to happen, I'd have to step up. I was planning to tell Dave everything I knew about MASH myself. But looks like you managed to do that. Thank goodness! You've handled it beautifully! You are currently the head of Caldea, you know. If you let things get personal and take MASH off the front lines, you'll be facing Umamo Universal, okay? Ah, uh, I'm not that naive, you know. I think I know what I must do and accomplish. Well, I might do something I'm not supposed to from time to time. Anyway, this talk about MASH is our secret, Dave. Make sure she doesn't find out. No matter what. And besides, you know. If humanity itself ends up showing us the right path to take, perhaps there's a reward at the end of that path. A reward that would easily extend Mashi's physical lifespan, or something like that. Now that's something the Holy Grail could be used for, I suppose. And maybe the King of Mages is actually not all that. Maybe we could defeat him without all seven Grails. If we had just one Grail to spare, we could use it on Mash. It's not too much to ask for a happy ending like that, right? I like that idea! Yeah, if that's possible. I wonder how. Foo! Foo! Sorry I'm late. Mash Kiri Light, now attending the briefing 27 minutes late. So, you all seem to be having a good time chatting. Is something going on? Mash, are you feeling okay? Hey, you shouldn't be running around yet. You need to be getting lots of rest now, Mash. Oh my, the, those two are helpless, I see. Phil? Senpai? Doctor? Weren't you chatting? No, no. These two are just worry wards. Look how flustered they are just because you passed out the one time. Wait, passed out? Huh? Oh, right. That. I'm sorry for making you all worry. Wait, 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 what? It was such a long battle and a war no less. Seems like my body sustained more damage than usual. But as you can see, I've recovered now, so there's no problem. I've gained experience too, so that will come in handy next time. Oh, was it in relation to what happened in America? Next time? Yes. The staff mentioned that they'd found the coordinates for the sixth singularity. Was I mistaken? Oh my. Should I have enforced a gag rule? The command room staff is so careless. But it's like you said, Mash. Master Dave, we've pinpointed the sixth singularity. You and Mash will continue your search for the Holy Grail. Do either of you have any objections? No objections. No, she wouldn't want to sell out the next one. Right, me neither. I will obey you, Master. <laughs> as you can see, Phil is motivated as well. I see. Then let's move up the schedule and start the briefing. About the sixth singularity we've discovered. The era is the 13th century. The location is Julesam, known as the Holy Land. To be precise, it's 2073 AD. That kind of scrolled past. The Ninth Crusade has just ended, and the kingdom of Jerusalem has vanished from the face of the earth. The end of the Crusades. The Western nation's withdrawal from Jerusalem has greatly affected the history of mankind. You could say it's an apt time and place to be chosen as a singularity. At least, that was the case until yesterday. The truth is, the sixth singularity was detected before the one in America. But the results from Sheba were just so unstable. So is Sheba like a supercomputer then? The error couldn't be verified, and at times, no observation could be carried out. Do you understand? 
It's not like we all observed was the red color of burning lands. There were times when the light of observation itself disappeared. In other words, the sixth singularity doesn't exist on the surface of Chaldeus. That section alone is hollowed out completely. That's right. This is unprecedented. The sixth singularity is trying to leave the flow of humanity. All ray shifts until now have been battles against Solomon's holy grails, each threatened to disrupt its respective era. This time, the singularity itself is becoming history that should not exist. If we leave it alone, human history will be severely damaged, independent to the restoration of Solomon's incineration. Thus, the foundation of humanity evaluation of the sixth singularity is EX, meaning everything about it is unique. Once again, we can't provide much backup from Chaldea. We have no idea what's going on. Are you still willing to go on with MASH, Dave? Of course. As always. Alright, then let's begin the ray shift right away. Get into the coffins, you two. As usual, Da Vinci and I will be in the command room. Do, 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 do. Fa? Hey, what are you doing? Why are you opening the remaining coffin? Huh? What do you mean? I'm going with them. Isn't that what we were talking about just now? I mean, this is an unprecedented huma foundation of humanity EX. Dive needs the help of a genius. At last, the Vinci is... Oh! Yes, that's right. I said so before, right? If push comes to shove, I'll take part. And now that time has come. You can just leave it all to me now. Idiot, I never gave you the go-ahead. Once you reshift to the singularity, you can't return to Chaldea till the, till the foundation of humanity is repaired. If something happens, it'll be too late. What will become of Chaldea if something happens to you? Hi, you. I may love myself, but even that remark makes me mad. What Kalto needs right now is a human. You, Romani. I'm just a carefree servant. Fib, fib, fib. <sighs> if you're so insistent, I don't think I can stop you. You are the ideal support for these two. Right, right. Leave the front lines to me and get yourself a good long rest. All right. So why don't we head out, Dave? Marsh? Even if the difficulty level is EX, Basically, it's still 13th century Jerusalem. Jerusalem draws people of many faiths. The battlefield will almost certainly be in the city. And if that's the case, I could do my part, and then some. If it's in the city, we won't have to travel far, unlike America. Fail! Fail, 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 fail! Yes, I can't wait to taste the local foods. All right, this way, please, foo. Looks like Mash can communicate with Fu in some way, after all. Dave, we may be out of our element, but our game plan hasn't changed. Find what's causing the disruption in that era and retrieve it. Or else, destroy it. I don't think Solomon will be around to get in the way, but be especially alert all the same. Understood. Leave it to us. That's what I like to hear. All right. Ray shift program starts! Whoa! Finally, I'm a member of the Grand Order team in search of the Holy Grail! I'm getting so fired up! Alright, Doctor. See you again in this command room. Thank you for all of your concern. Right. Go on then, Mash. Whatever you do, make a journey you won't regret. Unsummon program start. Spiritron conversion start. Ray shift starting in 3, 2, 1. All procedures cleared. Grand order commencing operation. Ooh, it's been a while since I've last done one of these. Sixth singularity. Grand Order, Human Foundation Value EX, 802073, Divine Realm, oh gosh that went kapoof, but yeah, Divine Realm of the Round Table Camelot, 
Man, that was actually a quite lengthy prelude. I think this might do it for our ending point for now, folks. And then next time we can actually explore the lay of the land. Which might be fun nonetheless. Although we could just have a brief preview for now. Because I believe if I hit this there should be uh, any events, right? Let's find out. Ugh. Nope, no events for now. We're just in a sandstorm desert. Okie dokes, folks. Thank y'all for watching this episode of Fate's Granddaughter. And I'll see y'all next time as we continue up on our journey to save humanity. Ta-ta for now.